Hello, Namaskar and a very good evening to all the viewers watching NCRT's live interactive session. This is Simran Singh and you have all connected with us through eVidya channel number 6 to 12. And besides this, viewers, we have so many different mediums through which you all can connect with us and you can participate in our live sessions by raising your queries and your questions in the comment section of our YouTube channel that you are well versed with. It is NCERT official. So it's around 4 p.m. on your watch and regularly, that is from Monday to Friday, we have our special segments from 4 till 5 p.m. And once again, I would like to take the moment to welcome all our viewers in the five days online training running on leveraging digital technology for school and teacher education. And as I just informed you that it's the five days online training since the past four days, we have been conducting the training sessions on varied topics uh, with regard to leveraging digital technology for digital platforms, for audio broadcast, for video broadcast and also with regard to policy recommendations. Today it's the fifth and the concluding day of our online training session and today we are going to discuss at length about leveraging mobile applications for digital education. So as you all know that uh, technological integration plays a vital role when it comes to the process of teaching and learning, especially in the wide range and changing technological world and leveraging technology provides us immense advantages because we have limitless supply of education and also knowledge through different domains so that we can choosely we can choose and uh, become wise uh, so uh, viewers as I informed you that it's the fifth day of the online training program let's have a look at the website of CIET and CRT uh, to get to know more about uh, this particular training segment so just have a look at the website and uh, you can see that this is the home page of um, the, for this particular online training session and it's the detailed schedule of the five days online training program and uh, on day one we discussed about leveraging digital technology for school and teacher education with regard to the policy recommendation and on second day we discussed about leveraging broadcast for digital education then uh, it was about leveraging digital platform for education yesterday uh, we had a word regarding digital education through online courses and online trainings and today it's all about mobile applications to be leveraged for digital education so we also uh, have our post session activity that is the quiz for all of you and uh, i will be guiding you towards the end of the program from where you can access the quiz link but as of now uh, before introducing you to the expert for today's program here is an important piece of announcement for all of you regarding g20 presidency we are proud of the fact that india assumed the g20 presidency and will convene the g20 leaders summit for the first time in the country in this year, that's 2023. The nation is deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism. India's G20 presidency is a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play a very important role by finding global pragmatic solutions for the well-being of everyone and in doing so, manifesting the true spirit of Vasudhev Kutumbakam. So viewers, let's get back to the conversation, the fifth day of our online training segment and providing us more insights. Today, the speaker who has connected with us in the studio is Dr. Rizal Karim, sir. Good evening, sir. We welcome you. Thank you. Thank you, Simran. Uh, Hello, sir viewers. Sir is serving as assistant professor at CIET and CRT. And viewers, you already know the different mediums through which you can connect with us. Again, I am emphasizing it and it's right there on your screens. You can give us a call in case of doubt at 8800440559. And it's a humble request to all our viewers that if you have any questions, any queries regarding online uh, training programs or the post session activity and certification, then all your queries will be attended only at this particular website uh, link flashing on your screens. And the mail is training.helpdesk at the rate ciet.nic.in. And besides that, if you have any of the questions uh, regarding the training programs or from our experts, then they are most welcomed in the comment section of NCRT official or you can give us a call at our national helpline number. So, sir, let's begin the conversation. And uh, in the first place, uh, let's get to know more about the educational scenario of India. Thank you. Thank you, Simran. Hello, viewers. So, to start with, I just want to give a quick glimpse of the hmm. education scenario that pertains to our country. So, as we know, we have uh, more than 1.3 billion, around 1.4 billion population and of wh which there are 330 million 
that means 33 crore students and out of these around nearly 26 crore or 260 million school going students are there, right. And for them we have around 1.5 million schools, 15 lakh schools in this country and nearly some 900 plus universities and, uh, and many other thousands of teacher training institutes and all this, right. So, given this uh, um, broad spectrum of numbers, gigantic number and scale of our country. So, so we, we, we wish to achieve the universal goal of imparting quality and equitable education to each and every citizen of this country, right. So, as we know that in our country, our country is a pretty young and, and almost two thirds are, are young and youths. So, imparting skill education and skilling them, making them ready for the job field and uh, to pursue other avenues in their career is, is one of the major Im achieve, I mean goal or target of, of uh, education of this country. And the national education policy 2020 also has emphasized a lot saying that uh, to, to cover this scale at, at, at a rapid speed, we need to adopt more and more digital technology, digital medium to impart training and education and skilling of large number of students of this country, right. And we also know that there exists a significant digital divide in our country, right. Because, uh, be, because of different socio-economic situation in our country, each and every citizen may not have access to high speed internet, each and every learner may not have access to digital device at home, right. So, NCRT uh, as an organization under the aegis of Ministry of Education Government of India is carrying out different initiatives from time to time to address the challenges of, of involving or implementing technology for greater benefit of teaching learning particularly in the field of school education and the organization CIET is the is the nodal agency. So, I will just like to give you a quick glimpse about what Central Institute of Educational Technology at NCRT does right. So, it is a nodal agency under the Department of School Education Literacy Ministry of Education Government of India for school education right. So, CIET particularly within NCRT advises and assists and coordinates different projects, missions and activities pertaining to educational technology or information and communication technology. And we also actively involve and partner with our states, SCRTs, SIETs and different other organizations from states, UTs to implement and adopt in, in continuous hand holding of each other, right. So, NCR, CIET as an organization we utilize, we have been utilizing traditional medias like radio, TV, satellite communication and more recent so digital media to enhance teaching and learning and improve as I said productivity in schools. We also carry out research and production of uh, we have we have in house studios and other apparatus. So, we, we also carry out development production of quality contents in different formats, audios, videos, interactives and various other formats, right. We also extensively carry out capacity building of teachers, teacher educators across the country particularly with the emphasis on how to bring in or how to integrate information and communication technology in, in education. And we also ultimately finally, we, we put a lot of effort on dissemination of these contents, these teaching training resources, these e-learning resources to each and every learner of this country. So, through portals, websites, mobile apps, sometimes broadcast, sometimes telecast and all these different channels as I said, we try to leverage that. Yeah, and uh, uh, sir, as uh, we have uh, so many different portals, uh, digital platforms for education. So, why particularly we are discussing about uh, mobile applications today? How does they come in so handy, interactive or easy for our viewers to use? Sure, thank you. So, that is a pretty important question, a question can come to my mind, I mean anyone's mind when we have mobile, I mean websites, web portals, why do I need a mobile app? So, it has been found that I mean like almost many other countries in India also, uh, uh, there are there is a significant penetration of mobile application, mobile devices in people's hand, right? Yeah. And people find it handy to carry mobile devices wherever they are going. So, learning on the go. So, with an aim of achieving learning on the go. Uh, uh, NCRT also started the journey of coming up with mobile apps. So, what happens is that probably a web portal will give you much more ease and comfort in going, going through a reading a book or watching a video. But due to various reasons you might be or it might be traveling or you might like to carry the download your books and then read them offline while, while you were you are not into a proximity of an internet connection. 
So, so these are the certain advantages which I mean only a mobile device can give you, right? You, you do not have to hook to or you need to have, do not have to access to a desktop or a laptop to access our portals and contents. With this purpose only uh, uh, mobile devices are being used and I will cover later in, in this presentation how mobile device is also helping us to reach the unreached in the sense those who are probably not enough literate in digital technologies for them also how mobile device becomes useful so I'll, we will we'll uh, see in our so that would be quite helpful because a uh, lot of our viewers they, uh, they might have certain challenges or issues in uh, using technology per se and uh, we had questions uh, during our online training sessions as well that viewers who are not so tech savvy right so they might find it a bit difficult to access to the different platforms so how we have uh, overcome those challenges citing the challenges first and how we manage to overcome those challenges to make things conducive for our viewers. Sure, sure. So, uh, we will discuss more on, on uh, as we go from initiative to initiative, but to, to briefly answer your question Simran, yeah. uh, our focus always whenever we develop a mobile app is that the ease of use, the yes. user interface and the user experience we try to design in such a way hmm. that it becomes very easy for the user to navigate user does not have to collect, I mean one of the significant target of NCRT is not to collect any data which does not yeah. have a direct significance or implication right for our purpose. Mm. So, unless a data is needed, if I, if I can serve you something through mobile app without collecting your credential also, so we do not we don't collect it right. So, now coming back to our discussion, uh, we, in today's presentation or in this session, we will dis discuss some of the major digital initiatives like PME Vidya, Diksha, mm. e Partshala, Nista, ICT curriculum and many others, right. So, to start with um, around in 2017, NCRT first started with, with its mobile application, journey of mobile application in education. So, NCRT came out with the initiative called e Partshala. So, e Partshala was launched primarily with that aim of disseminating our textbooks as you as the viewers might be aware ncrt also develops all the textbooks of school education from class 1 to class 12 in english hindi and urdu in three languages so far ncrt has been developing so nearly around 370 368 370 textbooks are there today with ncrt so these books are disseminated given freely to anyone and everyone anybody who has a mobile app can access these textbooks so ncrt primarily developed this book and these books are digitized in three different formats they are as pdfs they are as flip books so that one can get sorry get an experience of flipping through the pages so flip book kind of experience we give and the third is to make it more accessible for people with special needs or more to make it more accessible, hmm. right. So, we make as EPUB also. So, PDF, flipbook and EPUB are the three different formats in which all the textbook of NCRT are disseminated. So, in ePartshala, we have ePartshala website and we have ePartshala mobile app for both Android and iOS. So, if you go to ePartshala website and if you, if you search filter, choose your class, choose your book, choose your language, you get to access all our books as flip book formats. But same e Partshala mobile app if you download from either Google Play Store or iOS Play Store, then you get to access those very books as EPUB formats. So, EPUB means you get additional features like you can uh, dictionary is added, so you can find a meaning of a word, you can add a boot bookmark, you can take a note, you can color it and all these various other features are there in ePartshala, right. And ePartshala was recognized by the Ministry of Electronics and IT and Government of India and it was recognized as the gold award under the best mobile app category in education in the year 2017. And since then the journey has not stopped. So, ePartshala as you can see it on, on the portal we have these many around 2 million visitors we have. Um, uh, sorry, 200 million visitors, I mean more than 2 crore visitors are there and uh, this app has a rating of uh, both the play store as well and uh, our mobile app itself, e Patsala app, app itself has been downloaded more than 55 lakh times by different users through the play stores and all this right. And I have already mentioned the number of in books available on these apps and these are 
for the viewers um, ease of reference we have put some um, screenshot of the both the web portal and the mobile app here right so one can one can see one how one can go to the portal and access the books or one can just go to play store and search e partshala and download the mo install the mobile app and then it doesn't require you to log in you doesn't you require you to create an account right you simply use the book download the you can download also the book on your device so that you can refer the your downloaded books any chapter any book you can download and use them anywhere anytime right and sir uh, with regard to that one of our viewer is asking us so whenever we are using any any sort of digital platform uh, say digital portals or mobile application it asks our data and uh, when you have to provide your data so uh, there are certain safety concerns or security concerns associated with it yes so how have we managed to uh, win the trust of uh, all our users sure that again is a, is, is a very important question simran so ncrt very much respects the privacy and safety and security of users data so that's why as we said we try to abide by all the laws to start with first of all we only try to gather only those minimal data which are must to provide you a better service yeah if if without knowing your name also i can serve you my e contents or my books then i don't mind i i am not interested ncrt is not interested to collect your name also hmm. so that's how for example in e partshala without providing any data you can access our books and you yeah. can use our mobile apps so so as as we will see in the, in this in this session most of our mobile app doesn't require you to even create an account so you are not giving us any data we are not tracking you in in diksha as we will discuss later we are we are just trying to find out which district you are which state you are so that we can provide you books or recommend you books particular to your state that's, that's the only that's true for purpose. the convenience of the users exactly, only exactly 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 thank you so going ahead from e partshala so these are again some of the screenshots going ahead from e partshala so so we we ncrt did branding of e partshala and we came out with a series of apps under the branding of e partshala the some of them we will will cover in today's session this includes uh, nista this includes our augmented reality app this includes parak uh, we we came out with national achievement survey app we also launched e partshala scanner and in addition in recent times we also came out with mobile apps for implementation of national curriculum framework right and and the um, um, inclusive education mobile app called prashast so these are some of the apps that we will cover in today's session so to start with uh, the significant uh, as of today initiative of ncrt which is diksha right so diksha.gov.in as you can see below on my screen the tv screen so if you, if you go to this url you are able to access diksha and what diksha is in uh, diksha is is a repository of contents and textbooks of almost all the central as well as state boards of this country so each and every state board is a tenant on diksha so a learner from anywhere across the country can either use the mobile app or go to the portal and decide which boards content he or she wants to see be it cbsc be it ncrt nios icsc or any may you choose any state any union territory board and you go to that and then you 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 select your class select your media and you get to see those textbooks and not only textbooks many other additional teaching learning materials related to that chapter so you get to see videos you get to see explanation videos activities practice videos additional reading materials infographics various other types of e contents are there okay so so these are some of the stats which i'm not mentioning here i mean you can, can see on the screen and diksha has dedicated verticals as of today of for foundation literacy and numeracy on adult education vocational education we also have a dedicated vertical in diksha for virtual lab and we have dedicated virtual vertical in diksha for children with special needs okay and uh, i'll just just for for benefit of our readers or viewers i'll quickly like would like to share here is that during the pandemic we started this concept of coherent access so what we are doing is that ncrt during the time of pandemic launched 12 dedicated tv channels dth tv channels one channel for each class so that's how class 1 to 12 there are 12 tv channels and this tv channels disseminate 24 by 7 video contents mapped to ncrt's textbooks of classes 1 to 
Now what we did is that on each of those videos we embedded a QR code. So if a learner is at home and watching the TV of that DTH TV PMA with their TV channel and if he or she has missed a portion of the video by the time she turned on the TV. So one can I mean easily scan the QR code of that video on the TV through a mobile app and it will take you to the relevant Diksha page of that chapter where this video belongs and you can get to see the not only that video many other additional uh, reading and teaching learning materials also. So, this is the concept of coherent access that we started and these are the different kind of e-learning contents that Diksha hosts today, critical thinking questions, mind maps, read along stories and poems, fun activities, simulations, videos, worksheets, etc. Right? And uh, so, these are again some of the screenshots of Diksha which highlights that how Diksha portal looks and how the mobile app looks. Diksha can be accessed in the role of a teacher, student, parent or head teachers and other officials. Right? And uh, these are again some of the I mean screenshots of Diksha and today Diksha is being used not only by students but by teachers as well. We are carrying out various types of continuous capacity building of teachers through Diksha portal. We will we'll discuss later how we are also running the online versions of our flagship Nishta teacher training program also through Diksha. Okay. And, uh, the third initiative mobile in, in terms of mobile app that I want to discuss here is that national curriculum framework. So, as we all know government of India came out with the third national education policy Rashtriya Shiksha Niti jiske hum kehte hai. We, we came out, it, uh, out, uh, out in July 29 July 2020 right and NEP has significant recommendations for various aspects of school education as well as higher education. Right. To implement the recommendations of NEP related to school education, NCRT with the help of uh, Ministry of Electronics and IT came out with a dedicated portal called National Curriculum Framework Tech Platform. So, the purpose of it was to consult various stakeholders, parents, teachers, education officers, social workers, general public scientists, other experts from district up to state and then up to the national level. So, that the development of new national curriculum frameworks and the upcoming textbooks can have discussions in a bottom up approach. So, that the discussions and the recommendations and the suggestions come up from bottom from district level itself the consultation happens, those reports come to the portal, the portal summarizes the report and then the people at the state level, the state level functionaries get to see what different districts want, what their different districts are suggesting regarding teacher education, teachers improvement, quality improvement, students improvement, what kind of courses they are um, I mean words should go through in that school and all this right. So, this national curriculum framework portal tech portal for NCF is the portal to develop national curriculum frameworks in school education, teacher education, adult education as well and foundational level as well as to develop and disseminate the textbooks related to class 1 to 12 based on the new education policy right. So, so this is the po portal and app. So, this this app gives you so do do this NCRT carried out a mobile apps mobile survey across the country and for this this mobile app was developed called NCF um, survey. So, so the purpose was that any volunteer can go to any any anyone any citizen of this country who may not be very na, na, I mean I mean na, native of technology who may not be knowing much of technology how to even handle mobile phone. So, volunteer can take his or her mobile phone go to the uh, respondent read out the questions in local languages seek the response or feedback and put it in the survey. So, in a quick span of time we could NCRT could gather survey from almost each and every state in UT of this country in large numbers. Okay. So, and while carrying out capacity building of states to, to do all these activities for development of NCF, NCRT also launched a NCF training mobile app. So, this is there and 
Further, it was decided by the government of India that the development of new curriculum and new textbooks in the field of school education should have say or say feedback from each and every citizen of this country. So, for this purpose a mobile app very simplified mobile app was developed by NCRT in which only 10 questions are there and the interface as well as questions are available in all the 22 plus English all the 23 languages. So, and user anyone who is giving his or her responses or opinion about how the future of textbook, how the future of curriculum should be for this country, he or she simply needs to download this Dishank digital survey for national curriculum Dishank mobile app from play store. He or she does not have to register, does not have to enter mobile number, no OTP, nothing just or download the app, open it, install the app, open it, choose your language, click on next, you get to see one by one question, 10 questions are there, give your responses, submit that is all. So, as of today we are very happy to share that almost 13 lakh people across the country have shared their feedback through this Dishank mobile app survey and these are being considered and evaluated and analyzed by the national steering committee uh, at the national level who is developing the national curriculum frameworks and the and the guiding us the development of new textbooks ok and these are some of the screenshots uh, of the survey app ok. Another significant achievement uh, of NCRT is the national achievement survey. So, as you know NCRT periodically uh, every three year in particular carries out large scale country wise survey national achievement survey that we call for class 1, 3 and 5 right. So, the so the, the I target or aim of this survey is to gauge or, or measure the status state of education across the, across the country right. So, this is the large scale activity being done periodically across the country and the reports are published. So, reports are published not only at the national level reports are published for this achievement surveys for for class 1, 3, 7, 8 um, state level as well as at district level. So, the this national achievement survey mobile apps allows anyone and everyone to access those reports. So, anybody who is interested to find out how their district performed in one particular NAS survey in a particular class. So, he or she can anytime download the mobile app and get to see uh, the performance of their districts right. So, so these are this is the portal and this is the um, screenshot of the home page of the mobile app of NAS and these are some of the ratings about it, data about it, how many reviews are there, how many downloads are there and all this right. This screen in a nutshell shows what are the viewers, number of viewers, number of downloads of uh, these mobile apps on Android play store, but we will cover them as we go ahead. Another major activity of NCRT is the continuous professional development of teachers and the national education policy 2020 also has rightly recommended about uh, that every teacher should mandatorily undergo a 50 hours of continuous professional development each and every year right. So, NISTA national initiative for school heads and teachers holistic advancement is the flagship teacher training program of NCERT and so far NCERT has rolled out four different versions of NISTA. Version means the first NISTA was rolled out uh, for elementary school teachers in which the target was to cover 42 lakh teachers right. Then the NISTA secondary we have covered for around more than 7 lakh teachers were on trained I mean during the NISTA was being carried out in face to face mode, but once the pandemic due to COVID-19 pandemic the NISTA teacher training program was converted to online mode and since then NCRT is periodically carrying out teacher training program this NISTA through an online mode. And the NISTA FLN we have trained 12.6 lakh teachers and then there is NISTA ECCE right and various other capacity building courses for teachers CIT and CRT continuously keeps on running and um, some 4 lakh certificates have been people have been certified. Other than that NCRT also carries out runs 28 courses MOOC courses for school students for classes 11 and 12 through the SWAM platform right. So, this is the in, in a nutshell the target and the coverage of NISTA 
how many districts were onboarded on Diksha, in how many languages each and every Nista module was launched. So, as you can see the first version of Nista for elementary teacher was run in 11 different languages. In Nista 2 which is for secondary level was run in 10 different languages. Nista for foundational literacy and numeracy was made available in 11 languages. So, each Nista has for example, Nista first version of Nista for elementary has 18 modules. Nista secondary has 12 modules. Nista for FLN has 12 modules and then Nista ECC which is currently ongoing has 6 courses right. And these courses can not only be pursued through the portal, these courses can also be pursued through the mobile app as well. So, this is the this is, these are some of the screenshots of Nista mobile app I mean this app was particularly launched when Nista was being run through on face to face mode. So, teachers could register, they could carry out their assessment through the app, they could access all the digital versions of their modules also they could share their videos feedbacks and their they could access the faqs and all these things through the mobile app as well okay now another another important uh, active work of cit and crt is the prashast so prashast what it is it is a disability screening checklist for schools okay so prashast again is a mobile app and these are some of the screenshots of uh, mobile app of the Prashast. It is a pre-assessment holistic screening tool. So, what Prashast does is that as you know uh, RPWD Act of India in 2016 recognized 21 disabilities conditions, right. But it is important that symptoms of different abilities or su such challenges should be recognized and identified as early as possible. So, but in our country each and every school does not have a special education teacher, right. The teachers who are expert in, in recognizing and identifying such disabilities are not there in each and every school. So, to address this challenge NCRT has come out with a mobile app, it is with, with a screening tool, it is it's, it's a list of questionnaire in different parts. So, teacher has to since teacher is the one who closely interacts the each and every learner engages with them. So, teacher has to monitor the behavior, working behavior, talking how the student re in uh, I mean uh, takes part in different group activities, how the student reacts, how the student reads, how the student writes, different parameters of, of, of each and every learner as early as possible. So, so this is the so that the teacher acts as the first layer of identifier. So, this is the mobile app which gives you a list of tool or a set of questionnaire for each and every teacher. Any teacher can register on the app through verification of the school principal, anybody just cannot because the identifying and discussion about a student's ability and disability as early at, at an early stage is a very, very sensitive and confidential matter, right. So, to, to maintain that con confidentiality it is it was decided that each and every teacher will be onboarded on the process app only through verification of the school principal itself. So, this is as you can see on my screen some of the questions are there the teacher has to observe and monitor the student and answer the questions. And based on these questions this, this tool automatically generates a report which will then be shared with uh, special educators or the experts who, who are trained to identify and say whether a particular student has a particular disability or not and if so what action to be taken. So, this is all about Prashast and we are very happy to share that in since launch in a quick span of time Prashast has been adopted by a large number of students I mean school to, schools and school systems across the country in using I mean including different states and uh, UTs of this country right. So, this is a dashboard as you can see. So, uh, uh, around 4 lakh registered users were there, U users means the teachers of which and who have um, screened and entered data about 15 lakh students so far and uh, 1.5 lakh teach schools have been onboarded through I mean in this app. So, as you can see this is a two part survey, first is completed first part is and, and second part. So, so this dashboard is showing all the data about Prashast and its users and, and number of survey completion and all this. 
So, the next initiative of NCERT, CIT and CRT is the PM Evadia Augmented Reality App. So, for the benefit of our viewers, I would like to quickly share here the fact that augmented reality is one of the emerging technology like virtual reality, like 3D or 360 videos. So, augmented reality what it does is that it augments your reality. So, so the challenge in, in the context of education is that when you have a physical book, you cannot show interactive contents on that. On a page of paper, you can merely write a text or you can put a figure or draw a table or a chart, right. How do you bring that figure into life? How do you bring it, make it interactive? So, there the technology of augmented reality can be leveraged and CIT and CRT has been continuously working on to leverage that technology for benefit of education. So, as you can see on my screen, uh, this is the page of a book where there is an image, but through our AR app, PM Evidya augmented reality app, if you just download the app from the play store, install it. Now, if you open the app, it opens your camera. So, you put the camera in front of any book which has a figure, right. So, it makes that figure lively. So, we are continuously adding the activities. It is not that all, all your books, all your figures in your books are now supported. No, we are continuously working on it. So, to start with, we have already developed some AR contents and we have disseminated them uh, through the app. So, so, when you scan it, that figure comes into your screen and that becomes lot lot interactive. So, one can touch it, one can play around it, one can click on it, answer to response and one can see as you can see on the parts of different parts of bones and face and one can touch and see what it is, one can listen, right. So, with increased interest of the students, this, in, this will increase the interest of the students because of augmented interaction. Students will be able to learn concepts by directly uh, experimenting rather than simply looking at the image and concluding about something, right. So, another initiative of NCRT in the context of education is students support program. So, NCRT had an MOU with the Republic of Mauritius and under this NCRT has been supporting the government of Republic of Mauritius to launch their portal as well as app for dissemination of e-contents based on their country syllabus. So, we developed the mobile app and the portal and since then we have been hosting and disseminating their contents regularly uploading more and more of their contents sharing data with them right. So, this is the web page of uh, students exchange I mean students support program of Republic of Mauritius that they call as SSP it is student support program and it was developed and launched and hosted by CIT and CRT and this is the glimpse home page of the web portal. One can come and browse different e-resources for different subjects and these are some of the screenshots of SSP Mauritius mobile app as well. Again this app does not require you to give any of your data, it does not ask you anything just download the app and start accessing and browsing your e-contents. So, another e NCRT in mobile app initiative is e partial scanner because there are different scanners at times scanners come with lots of free scanners come with advertisement and all these right. So, to come with come out with a lightweight scanner which can be downloaded and installed NCRT also developed an scanner so e partial scanner. So, what it does is that on the e partial portal other than the books NCRT also has developed lots of e-contents and uploaded these contents mapped to each and every chapter of those books on the e-partshala portal. So, anybody coming to e-partshala, I mean before coming to e-partshala, anybody who has a physical version, a physical copy of NCERT's book, each and every book in front of each and every chapter, we have placed a QR code, right. So, if you, if, you, if you have recently come across any of NCRT's physical books, just browse through it, each and every chapter at the beginning of each and every chapter you will notice a QR code is placed. So, what is the purpose? Through the QR code, we have linked additional teaching learning material for that chapter on e partshala, right. So, this scanner using this scanner, if you just op download and install the scanner and if you open it and if you just put the can scanner in, in on top of any of your um, physical book, it will take you to the relevant e partshala page where you can get 
many other additional videos, practice items and other things related to that chapter. And these are these are the again the screenshots of e partiala scanner app, right. So, that these are some of the I mean important mobile initiatives of NCERT. So, yes sir and uh, we have few questions from our viewers as well and if you allow could we take those questions. Sure, sure, sure. So, uh, sir one of the majority questions that have been a uh, part of the comment section, a uh, dominant part of the comment section is how is NCRT trying to manage uh, the digital divide or the digital gap because uh, uh, when we talk about uh, digital education, so there is an involvement of internet or uh, resources, but still uh, I, I believe that we are providing them content or in offline manner as well. So, uh, please reflect on this aspect. Sure, sure. Thank you. So, Simran as I said in the beginning, we do recognize and we do realize that there exist a digital divide in this country which is a reality right so so ncrt is working on multi pronged approach to hmm. address this digital divide so to start with what we are doing is that we are trying to for example in the case of e partiala hmm. so you can install download a chapter or a book and keep it in your mobile app so next time even if you don't have an internet access you just open the app you read the books in offline mode also. Similar thing we are trying out in Diksha also, so that can we have an offline version of Diksha. So that once I download the Diksha, once I download the contents, can I access them offline also. Hmm. This is one approach. The other approach is that we, we realize that when there is a challenge of getting a computer or laptop at home, right. Hmm. So there might be possibility that many users have a television set at home. Yeah. So, what if one does not have a device or I have a computer but not working or maybe I have a challenge of good speed internet, can I do I have a television at home? So, if mm. so yes, can I then I mean install I mean quickly I mean uh, get a D DTH antenna and can I then access the PME with the channels. So, with that purpose only NCRT came out with the 12 DTH PME with their channels one for each class. So, that I mean TV if you have a TV you do not need an internet right. So, you can access those if not many there may there may be situations where I mean people may not have a TV television also. For them also what NCRT did is that NCRT started producing lots of audio programs to, to, to start with what we did we made a recordings of all our audio, audio books and then various other educational content based on our curriculum mapped to our learning outcomes in audio formats. Mm. And since then we have been disseminating these audio files uh, through I mean uh, through different radio channels. So, we are happy to share that more, hundred four, more than 400 TV uh, through more than 400 radio stations these audio books or audio contents are being disseminated today including community radios, all India radios, FM radio channels, internet radio and we have podcast running on Geo Savan mobile mm. app as well. So, these are different channels through which we are trying to reach the unreached or to say otherwise reach each and every learner of this country. And uh, also sir our viewers would like to know that the different content whether it is the audio content or the video content that is being uh, uploaded on the different mobile applications or the digital platforms uh, of NCRT is the content more or less created from NCRT textbooks itself okay. or uh, we have uh, different other sources as well. Okay. So, yes we do refer to NCRT textbooks, but our primary focus is to cover the learning outcomes. Hmm. So, NCRT has come out with the learning outcomes for classes 1 to 12, because it is believed that the curriculum or the syllabus may vary from state to state, the textbook may vary, but broadly the learning outcomes does not vary, learning outcomes still remain the age appropriate learning outcomes still remain the same. So, if you have the contents which are mapped to learning outcomes rather than each and every topic of your books, so it becomes easier. So, even if a student from a different board from any state board comes to I mean watch NCRT's content, still those contents are valid and uh, useful for them. So, that is the agenda that is how we are working. And also uh, sir we would like to know that uh, we provide or disseminate information in different forms to our viewers. So, one of our viewers also wants to know that uh, whether we also train uh, teachers or uh, we inform them about the pedagogical approach that is to be taken during uh, the live lectures or the online trainings that yes. are to be conducted in different parts of the country. Sure, sure. Thank you. 
So, yes, this, this very program is one such program and as Simran said in the beginning, I mean periodically five we every month we come out with this five day kind of capacity building programs, training programs and our primary stake although this program, this kind of training programs are open for all, but our primary stakeholders are teachers. Hmm. So, what we do is that we, we through such trainings we take a theme and on such theme we, we discuss and deliberate and we involve various involve invite various experts and deliberate at length in details highlighting how teachers can benefit those technologies in their classroom that means we are talking about the pedagogical aspects another idea is that we are i mean work is that we are running continuously webinars right on, on and uh, we have covered more than 800 webinars and webinars are on different ict tools or different topics or, or also on how different pedagogical approaches, digital pedagogical approaches can be used by teachers for carrying out or bringing technology in education. Hmm. Furthermore, in, in the NISTA training programs that I mentioned, four versions of NISTA training programs. So, be it NISTA elementary, be it NISTA secondary, we have dedicated modules or chap courses on integration of information and communication technology in education. So, that module did exclusively deals on how teachers can decide the suitable pedagogy for their respective subjects while choosing technology for education. And sir, while developing the different forms of content that we have been discussing for the past 5 days, what are the important factors that we take into account that we should uh, keep this or we should exclude this? Are there any parameters created by CIT? Sure. So, CIT and CRT has dedicated, I mean detailed guideline about guideline for development of e-content, guideline for development of e-content for children with special needs. So, we have such standard guidelines, but in a nutshell if I want to share, if you would like to share some of the key parameters that any teacher should keep in mind or anybody should keep in mind while developing e-contents is that you try to make your content as interactive as possible because mm. today's learners attention spans are very very less because they are the native of mobile devices right we are migrants of mobile devices we were we were born at an at a, at a age where mobile devices were not there everywhere so we migrated but today's young kids school going kids are natives they born and they so they had mobile device in their hand at their disposal right so for them in i mean in, in the in the world of reels i must say so they don't have much of a longer attention span so if you are coming out with e content try to make it less lengthy small duration mm -hmm. and make it as interactive as possible if you are you are discussing something try to i mean showing something try to show it in terms of images figures charts instead of simply putting lots of text right and if you are talking about something, use lots of infographics. If you are using simple, if you have simple video, can you make it interactive video? Can you use tools like H5P to make it more interactive? If you are making a simple quiz, can you make interesting feedbacks after each and every question? So that when you give a feedback to my, my when I choose an answer, whether it is correct or incorrect your motivational or encouraging or challenging feedback might be very helpful for me. So, and, and further when, when teachers are preparing their own content through their mobile devices, many times we see that many teachers try to come out with enthusiastic teachers come try to record their educational videos using their own mobile phones. It is good, but try to take certain basic measures like can you come out to a quieter place where there is less noise or can you reduce the noise, can you at least figure out some place where there is enough light in the area or in your room, so that there is at least minimum level of brightness is there, right. These are the uh, and, and can, can your voice is audible clear enough, so these are some of the basic parameters I believe which anyone and everyone should uh, keep in mind while con developing e contents. Hmm. Because uh, we all know that learning is a continuous process, it keeps on evolving and uh, we need to be updated. 
sure. about the information and also creative at the same time because whenever we are accessing any content through internet so there is a bombardment of information from each and everywhere right. now we have to choose wisely and if uh, we want someone to reach out to our content obviously there has to be something more creative and different than the other ones uh, thank you so much sir for connecting with us and explaining at length about the uh, digital platforms or I should say the mobile applications that have been created by CIT and CRT in order to leverage a technology. So viewers before wrapping up uh, the fifth day of our online training program, uh, uh, I would request you to please take a look at our website and also you can participate in the post session activity that is the quiz. So the website of NCRT it is www.ciet.nic.in. And besides that, you can also access the website by just typing CIET on Google. So this is the home page of CIET website. Uh, there are so many options for you. For this particular training program, just click on events and under events, the third last option says workshop slash training. Now you will land on this page and there are three kind of activities because we uh, try our best to update you about the upcoming activities, the ones that have already been completed and also the one that are undergoing. So this is the detailed uh, description or the banner of the programs and the different areas that we have discussed so far. So the best part of the training program is whether it's the students, teacher, teacher educators, parents, administrators or general public. You can all participate in our live training programs and the video links in case if you have uh, uh, missed watching any of our live telecasts, the video links are uploaded there and for the fifth day that is today. Once we conclude the program, it will be uploaded uh, shortly for all of you. Uh, then how you all can participate in the post session activity, there are certain steps laid down for you. As step number one says registration, so you can register yourself by clicking on this link or by scanning the QR code. Then you can watch the live training programs on NCERT official. Also, you can connect with us through with their channel number 6 to 12. And there are certain other mediums through which you all can reach out to us. Now, participation in the post session activity and certification. You all can participate in the post session activity that is quiz. And if you score over 70%, you can receive a certificate from CIT and CRT. The link will be uploaded shortly by 6 p.m. today and the closing date is 21st of August 2023 by 6 p.m. So you get um, a lot of time to submit your entries uh, with us and at the same time if you score over 70% and above, you will receive a certificate of participation in your registered mail ID within 30 days of taking the post session quiz. If still you do not receive your certificate then do check your spam mail. And queries related to the non-issue of the certificate will be entertained only after 30 days from the date of opening the post-session assessment that is 21st September 2023 and the responses will be pro uh, provided only to the mails sent to the mail id training.helpdesk at the rate ciit.nic.in. Then your feedback matters a lot to us. So here is a Google form for all of you. It's blue. It's accessible to you. You can either scan the QR code and uh, share your feedback with us. So this was the fifth day of our training program. And now we are concluding the program. But what are you all waiting for? You can access the quiz and the link will be uploaded shortly. And I'm pretty sure that uh, the different areas that we have considered and also covered in the program. So you have enjoyed that. So before wrapping up this discussion, here is an important piece of information for all of you regarding the availability of NCRT textbooks. So NCRT textbooks for the academic year 2023 to 2024, they are available all across the country and you may purchase them directly from the different sales counters of NCRT located within the country. Also, you can place an order online for NCRT textbooks and besides this, uh, you can also download the PDF or the soft copy version of NCRT textbooks. In order to explore more about these textbooks and about authorized vendors, feel free to explore the website of NCRT that is www.ncert.nic.in. And next up we have our program of Sahyog where we try to provide guidance for mental well-being and psychosocial support to all the students and viewers watching our programs out there. So stay connected with NCRT official and be connected with Evitya channels. Namaskar.